Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we are going to talk about how to remove the whiskers and bring all the cheese, not cheesy in a bad way, but cheesy in a good way when it comes to attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive. We're going to talk about cheese versus whiskers, how to attract realtor partners by showing them all cheese, no whiskers. You see, if you want to catch a cat, that's a different thing than catching a mouse. Cats don't mind whiskers. That's their buddy. That's their furry friend. That's one of them. But if you're presenting whiskers to a mouse, that's a different story, right? Because they love cheese. They hate whiskers. They know whiskers are attached to something that wants to eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's called a cat, right? So it's important to present all cheese, no whiskers, if you want to attract a mouse. And the same thing goes here. So we're going to talk about those distinctions. All oh, What's the cheese? What's the whiskers? And how can you put yourself in a position to tip the scales of fortune in your favor so that you can attract versus repel? So you can be the welcome guest versus the annoying pest so that you can get more results with less time, energy, energy, and stress and have a whole lot more fun doing it. I don't know about you, but going after any type of business, whether it be a borrower or a partner and having that repulsion factor where it's like, they're not giving you the time of day, they're ghosting you, they're going, giving you the smoke screens, the objections, and you just can't seem to get past the high wall of resignation, skepticism, fear, etc., is exceedingly frustrating. Perhaps you can relate, right? It's like you're putting in the time, you're making the calls, you're doing the efforts, but you're coming up short, you're not getting the results. And it's like pounding your head against a paved wall. How do you get past that resistance? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. How to get into attraction mode versus repulsion mode. So that being said, let's get to it and do it. Let's talk about whiskers first. Whiskers. What are those whiskers? Well, I'm going to share with you three key whiskers you want to avoid. Okay. The first is selling versus chasing, or rather selling and chasing versus attracting. So anytime you're selling, you're chasing, you're begging, you're bribing, you're leaning towards the girl who may be leaning away. You're leaning to kiss her and she's leaning away. That's never a fun posture to be in. So if you're selling, the more you sell, the more you tend to repel. You may have noticed because it comes from a place where you need them more than they need you. In other words, you're coming to get versus coming to give. You don't want to be a go-getter. You want to be a go-giver, but you want to do it in a way where you've got a posture where you're cool as a cucumber either way, that you're not attached to the outcome either way, that you don't give a rip whether it's them or someone else because you've got the cookie. It's that relaxed confidence, right? That lets you know in your heart of hearts that you're giving them an opportunity to roll in your brand spanking new 2023 mint condition Ferrari. The question is, do they want an upgrade from their Firefly to the Ferrari or are they content with the Firefly they're already driving? If they're content with the Firefly they're already driving, then SW, 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 some will, some won't, so what, next, someone's waiting. You've got that relaxed posture where you don't need to conv convince, cajole, persuade, because persuading has an energy that you need them to do something, that you're attached to a particular outcome. Because if you can just get them to the outcome, then you can get what you want, which is the referrals, the business, the commissions. And of course, right now, now that everyone has clamored out from underneath their refi rocks about a year and a half ago as rates started to go up. And now everyone's clamoring after the same realtors, beating down their door, following old school methods from the dark ages with a lot of these quote unquote coaching programs that are getting them to do it the hard way, cold calling realtors, 40 realtors every Monday. 
they have more resistance than ever before. There's, but they're literally, you know, going down into their, their bunker, if you will, hiding themselves from the vampires. You know what I'm talking about, right? The lone leeches, the mortgage parasites that just want to stick their fangs in their neck and suck them dry of referrals. You don't want to be one of those people. So you want to shift from the selling energy into the, I got what you need. Do you qualify for what I've got energy? Do you feel the difference? There's a very different vibrational frequency between I need you to send me business. Let me sell you on why I'm so great and why I'm so good and why you should work with me versus I got what you need. I got what you want. I've got the cookie. The question is, do you qualify for the opportunity to work with me? Right? There's a stark contrast in energetic frequency. One is selling. The other one is attracting. So that's the first whisker you want to avoid. If you are presenting any semblance of selling, you are going to be repelling. That's a writer downer, by the way. I don't say things very often that are worth writing down. That's one worth writing down. If you are selling, you are repelling. The more you sell, the more you repel. So that's the first whisker we want to avoid. The second whisker we want to avoid is being average, being ordinary, just being another one of those average Joe LOs that's trying to be a lone leech, a mortgage parasite, trying to get business, trying to be one of those lone vampires, trying to suck loans from them. Any semblance, any communication or overture that gives them a sense that you're just another average Joe LO trying to leech loans, they're gonzo. You may know that to be true from personal experience. So you got to find a way to break through the clutter. If all your competition is zigging, you want to be zagging. If you want to be the top dog, you can't afford to be doing the average. You got to be doing the extraordinary. So one of the things that you always want to be cognizant of is how is this going to land for the recipient? How is my overture going to land for the recipient? You always want to put yourself in their shoes. And if the answer is, oh, just another average Joe LO, we got a big problem. Houston, we've got a problem. We've got to get out from underneath that box of ordinary. And we got to get into the stage of presenting yourself as being extraordinary, not in your eyes, but in their eyes. It's their perception that matters, not yours. So ordinary, let me break down what ordinary sounds like. I got great, great, great service. Throw me a bone. Now, nowadays, it's not even great rates, right? It's maybe competitive rates, maybe not great rates, but I've got competitive rates and great service. I've got great loan programs. I've got this loan program, that loan program. I can close on time. I can close early. You know, you've heard those things time and time again in the industry. And that, frankly, is just ordinary. That's a minimum expectation just to do business. They expect you to do great service and have competitive rates. They expect you to have some creative options when it comes to loan programs. They expect you to be able to deliver and close on time. That's just ordinary. That's not extraordinary. That's ordinary. If you want to get referrals, you can't afford to be ordinary. You've got to be extraordinary. So that's just one aspect of the me too mentality, the mean too marketing by me too. I mean, you know, they got great service. Me too. They've got competitive rates. Me too. They've got creative loan programs. Me too. But that's not enough, right? If you're cold calling realtors every Monday with how did your open houses go over the weekend? How can I help? That is just ordinary. That is not extraordinary. You know that I know that if you're visiting open houses, and you're just showing up unannounced with maybe a little goodie bag. And that's basically the bribe bag, right? The goodie bag is the bribe bag where you're trying to present yourself as someone who is a go giver, but really they know underneath you're a go get, you're, you're trying to get something. You're trying to get something out of them. And so you're bringing the, your bribe bag to them, but you don't have anything beyond your bribe bag. You know, there's nothing really compelling beyond that. That again has got you in the box of ordinary, not extraordinary. So those are some things you've got to think about before you start to reach out to realtors is how can I break outside of the box of being ordinary and position myself as being extraordinary, a breath of fresh air. Like we talked about before, being the welcome guest versus being the annoying pest, right? Being someone who 
is irreplaceable, indispensable as an asset to them, where you feel like a breath of fresh air to them, where instead of you being the loan vampire trying to leech loans, you are bringing so much value that they'd be crazy not to at least say yes to the opportunity to have a conversation. And by the way, there's lots of crazies out there. So don't get your knickers in a knot if not everyone, even when you have the best, most compelling offer out there, doesn't say yes to your overture. Like we talked about before, it's a numbers game, right? This is a contact sport. It's a numbers game. So you got to work through the numbers and it's S W S W S W. Some will, some won't. So what next? Someone's waiting. You got to be worked. You got to work through the numbers. It's a contact sport and it's a numbers game. You got to tip the scales of fortune in your favor by working the numbers, but it doesn't matter how many numbers you work through. If you're banging against the tree with a dull ax, you're doing it the hard way, right? We got to sharpen that ax. So today I'm going to give you some finer distinctions. We're going to take that grinding stone and grind the edge of that ax to get it wicked sharp so that when you whack against the tree, you're making an impact. You're getting more results with less time, energy, effort, and stress. And that's what it's all about. That's called working smart versus just working hard. I'm sure you'd agree. So the third whisker we want to avoid are what I call wobble words. Wobble words. What do I mean by wobble words? That's where you're presenting yourself and you're like, hi, this is Doran calling from ABC Mortgage. Um, I was thinking, you know, I saw you're doing some great stuff out there. Um, it, you seem like you really uh, know what you're doing and you're doing some great work um, and you got some good uh, reviews out there. Um, I was just wondering, you know, I'd love to see if maybe we can do some business together. Uh, I, I provide some great service and great rates, and uh, I'd love to see what I can do to help you grow your business. What do you think? Are you uh, open to maybe having a conversation? Notice the wobble, right? There's no certainty there. There's no confidence there. Now, this doesn't mean that when you're starting out, you're not going to have some fear, right? I've heard it once said that fear is pissing your pants because you're freaked out. Courage is doing what you need to do with wet pants. <laughs> so courage is not the absence of fear. It's doing it in spite of the fear. So when you're starting out, you're going to have some fear. That's normal. That's healthy. That means you're stepping out of your comfort zone. You got to be willing to do it bad before you can do it good. That's normal because anytime you're going to step out of your comfort zone, you're going to be feeling a sense of, oh shit, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know enough. I've never done this before. This is scary. And that's a healthy thing. That's the spout where all the good stuff pours out. That's called the domain of growth. The domain of growth is always outside of our comfort zone. Your dream is outside of your comfort zone. Your breakthrough is outside of your comfort zone. So here's the thing. Confidence comes on the other side of courage. Courage is the reward or rather confidence is the reward for feeling the fear and doing it anyways to do what you need to do with wet pants right so courage is just simply the prerequisite to confidence and confidence is the reward for courage so when it comes to reaching out to realtors you need to have a kick-ass value proposition you need to know that you know that you know that you're the bomb diggity and the no-brainer of the year for smart, ambitious, growth-minded real estate agents to partner with. You need to know in your heart that it's a privilege to work with you. It's a privilege to roll in your Ferrari. It's a privile privilege for people to upgrade from good because once they get a taste of great, they're never going to want to settle for good. You've got to know in your heart that you bring greatness to the table, that you bring excellence for excellence sake, that they'd be crazy not to want to work with you because of the value you bring, such that you're irreplaceable and indispensable. We're flipping the script so that the realtor needs you more than you need them. How awesome would that be? So that's exactly what you want to create. That's exactly what you want to be doing in your business. The question is, do you have that kind of value? If you don't have that kind of value, that's exactly what you need to be bringing to the table. 
is that kind of value that makes you irreplaceable and indispensable. And once you've got that certainty, because the most important sale you can ever make is selling yourself. If you haven't sold yourself, that's the prerequisite that you need to put in place before you sell anyone else. But again, we're not selling, we're serving. We're enrolling people to upgrade from good to great from selling from a loan leech in a mortgage parasite to someone who actually brings value versus takes value. Someone who helps them bring business, more buyers and sellers to the table versus takes buyers. So you want to have that kind of value. And that's a big reason why, again, smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us is because that is not an easy code to crack. We've been doing this for almost two decades. And we're not the sharpest tack in the drawer by any means. There are smarter people out there. There's certainly a lot more brain power in the world than what we bring to the table. But even dull and rather dim lights, if they will persist in pursuing mastery in one narrow area of expertise, one narrow topic of specialized knowledge, the secrets start to reveal themselves. And this has certainly been no exception. Almost two decades on the front lines of real life peeling back the layers of the onion, trying to figure out how can we unlock this? How can we crack this code? How can we crack the code when it comes to getting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling, begging, bribing, or kissing butts? That's the million dollar question at hand, right? And that's exactly what we figured out after almost two decades of trying to pick this lock. It's finally been a code we've figured out how to crack. So with that being said, let's dive in and share a few more distinctions on how to do this. Let's talk cheese for a moment, shall we? Let's talk cheese. How do we get the cheese? So first of all, cheese number one is buyers and sellers. Realtors love buyers. They love sellers, especially sellers. Sellers is an instant payday right now where there's in most areas of the country, both in Canada and the US, a scarcity of inventory. There's still a high demand for inventory. If they can just get a list, a listing, it's an instant payday, easy money. So everyone's clamoring after listings. The big question is, how do you get more listings? How do you help them get more listings? And another big question is, why would I want to get the more listings, Doran, when I actually serve the buyers. Well, here's the big idea. What's the ultimate bait for attracting buyers? You probably figured it out by now. Listings. The ultimate bait for attracting buyers is listings. So if you can help them get more listings, you're actually helping them bring the bait that attracts the buyers. And by the fact that you help them bring the listing, they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Now you're in a position of leverage to be able to demand and command that every buyer that comes to that listing from that listing comes to you versus their existing lender. And again, once they get a taste of great, they're never going to want to settle for good, right? Once they get a taste of the greatness you bring to the table, the excellence for excellence sake that you bring to the table, they're never going to want to settle for good with the average Joe LO who's just a lone leech. They're going to experience the difference. It's going to be like they've been in a dark, damp cave and all of a sudden, someone flipped on the lights and turned on the heat. It's a whole new world, right? You're going to light up the world such that they never see it the same way again. So that's one of the reasons why smart, ambitious, most uh, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com is to learn the secret sauce on how to get more buyers and more sellers for their partners, for their realtors, whether it be helping them squeeze more juice from the fruit from their database, getting more repeat and referral business, whether it be getting more leads to their open houses, following up systematically by email and text on those leads, uh, resurrecting dead leads and to offer what you got, motivated buyers, taking those dead leads out of their trash can into their cash can, whether it be helping them show up and shine online with a five-star reputation, whether it be turning their rave reviews and their raving fans into red hot referrals, all of those are just different aspects of marketing their business with more sophistication, with more prowess, such that they're able to get more from the marketing they're already doing, get more from the database they already have, get more from the leads they already have, get more from the traffic they already have. You see, that's what we call working smart versus working hard. That's what we call focusing on the vital few versus the trivial many. 
that 20% activities that produce 80% of the results or the 10% activities that produce 90% of the results. So your job as their partner, as their mortgage professional of choice is to help them do that, to get more meat off the bone, more juice out of the fruit. And as you do that, they're going to see you as irreplaceable and indispensable and send you all their business all the time. So that's the first cheese that will attract more than repel all day, every day is talk buyers and sellers that you bring buyers and sellers to the table that you're looking for a rock star realtor to send your buyers and sellers to. The more you can beat that drum like a cheap rap song with confidence and certainty and mojo versus wobble words and ah uh, and ah uh, and, and, and having that frequency of worry, anxiety, lack of confidence. I've struggled my entire life with that imposter syndrome. I literally have always had that in the background that's been getting dimmer and dimmer. The voice is getting quieter and quieter, but it's still there on my shoulder that, you know, do you really have what it takes? Are you really enough? Are you really good enough? Are you sure? I think you're an imposter. You're a fraud. You're a nobody. Who do you think you are? And everyone tends to have some degree of that voice, that nagging, stinking, thinking voice in their head. And the more you allow that voice to master you, the more you're going to be in the muck and mire of mediocrity, living a second best life in fear, anxiety, worry, and allowing the enemy to take you out. You see, God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with you. And your job is to align with the divine and start to realize that you're destined for greatness, that your birthright is purpose that leads to a path of prosperity to make an impact in other people's lives, not just to increase your standard of living, but increase your standard of giving, to be light in the darkness, to be a difference maker. And so it doesn't help anybody for you to play safe and play small. It doesn't help anybody for you to put your tail between your legs and be like me and feel sorry for yourself and feel not good enough. That throws mud in your creator's face. Your creator made you for a reason. The reason why you're the way you are in terms of your unique abilities, your weaknesses and your strengths is because you're called to delegate your weaknesses so you can dance in your strengths. So you can operate in your superpowers. And the more you can do that, the more you can show up and shine and soar like the eagle that you're called to be. And to make a difference, to live life on purpose, with purpose and prosperity, because the best way to help the poor is not be one of them, right? So may you flush out all the mind trash, all the stinking thinking that you're not good enough. You don't have what it takes. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not charismatic enough. Screw all that nonsense. That's all just from the pit of hell. That's the enemy speaking and align yourself with the truth that you have exactly what you need. You and God as a majority, you have all the faculties you need to live your purpose and to be able to fulfill that dream because that dream is in your heart, not to tease you or to tempt you, but to call it the best in you. So what if that was your truth? What if that, what if that was the truth? I'm here to tell you it is. And the more you align with the divine and align yourself with that light and that leadership and fill yourself with the love that comes from above and allow that love now to flow to you and through you. So you're a conduit of contribution. It's less and less about you. And it's more and more about serving others. It's less and less about, am I enough? And it's more and more about how can I serve? How can I make a difference? How can I light up someone else's world? How can I take someone from where they are to where they want to be, to live their divine purpose, to live their calling, to get out of the struggle, out of the stress, and into living their best life, their blessed life. Notice the difference where it's like, it's not about me. It's about how can I be used to make a difference in someone else's life? And so the first cheese inside of that concept of being a go-giver versus a go-getter is buyers and sellers, but that is not where we're done. We've just begun. Let's talk about another one. Another cheese that's going to attract these realtors to you, like hungry mice to a cheese factory, is certainty. Certainty. Certainty comes from doing the soul forging in your own heart and mind, knowing that 
you've got a purpose to fulfill and knowing that you have something of significant value and worth, knowing that you're not just enough, you're more than enough, knowing that even though you're imperfect and even though you have faults and failures and things from your past that perhaps you you regret that God's grace envelops you, that it's washed away, it's forgiven, that you're enveloped in God's love and God's light. And now you can go out there and fight the good fight, not out of your own strength, but God's strength and allow God's light and God's love and God's leadership to lead you and guide you into the promised land. So that is a certainty that comes from not having it all figured out, not having all your T's crossed and your I's dotted, not having the fullness of your potential achieved, not having, you know, all the education you want, all the knowledge you want. You don't have to see all the way up the staircase and around the corner and down the block. You just need to see that next step that you can serve someone to a higher level of impact in their business, that you're going to work harder than anyone else. You're going to care more than anyone else. You're going to deliver more than anyone else because you truly care. You can't be half pregnant. You can't half care. You either care or you don't friends. And if you truly care, that's a massive differentiator. That's what I call the unfair advantage when you truly care to your core. So that certainty comes from caring now, like we talked about confidence is the reward for getting comfortable, being uncomfortable, feeling the fear and doing it anyways. That's what courage is, feeling the fear and doing it anyways. That's how you build confidence. How do you build competence? You build competence by doing it when you suck. Every master was once a disaster, putting in the reps and doing it and doing it and doing it until all that practice builds proficiency. It doesn't create perfection. It creates proficiency because only God is perfect. The rest of us fall way short, right? We're human. So we're not seeking perfection. We're seeking progress, but it, this is a muscle. Certainty is a muscle. Here's something worth writing down. I am a merchant of certainty. You see your partners, your potential partners, they don't need your worry, your anxiety, your imposter syndrome. They don't need your lack of limitation and scarcity. They don't need you fighting for your limitations. They don't need that. They already have that themselves. They already have more than enough of that in their own head. They don't need yours. They don't need you to be sharing that, right? It's the old saying, misery loves company. They don't want that. They don't want that kind of company. So instead of bringing the darkness of the imposter syndrome, the lack of limitation and scarcity, bring the light of being a value creator an impact maker. And that comes from knowing that you care more than most, you'll deliver more than most, you bring excellence for excellence sake more than most. And you can go back to your previous experiences. You can do a courage journal all the times you were back against the wall and you found a way to overcome. All the times where you felt like all the odds were stacked against you and you still overcame all your wins, all your victories, all the times you've achieved excellence more than average, more than ordinary. May that build your confidence. May that build your certainty. If you're brand new to this business, you want to remind yourself, I may be new to winning. I rather, I may be new to the mortgage business, but I'm not new to winning. I may be new to the mortgage business, but I'm not new to winning. Notice how that builds your certainty versus I don't know enough about loan programs. I don't know enough about finding a home for the loan and packaging the deal and doing a proper app. I don't know enough about this, enough about that. That's going to leach and hemorrhage your certainty and your power. But when you focus on all the times you won and all the times that you've overcome, when you remind yourself, you may be new to this business, but you're not new to winning, it builds your confidence. This is like wind in your sails, right? All of a sudden you're walking taller. Your shoulders are rolled back. You're donning your freaking cat cape and you're owning your champion self. And that's the key to get producing champion results is owning your champion self. Again, if you're a person of faith like I am, it's not about striving in your own strength because you'll always have limitation there. You're human. It's about surrendering and allowing God's strength to fill your weakness so that you just are simply a conduit. You're simply an able and ready and receptive and surrendered vessel to say, here I am, God, use me. And it's in that surrendered state. That's where your power lies.
that strength and serenity is in the, on the other side of surrender. On the other side of surrender is strength and serenity. Isn't that a beautiful thing? It's, it's counterintuitive. It's countercultural, but it's so true. So that's the second cheese is certainty. You got to speak with certainty. You got to have it before you can give it. If you don't have certainty in yourself and your purpose and your dream and your capabilities and what you're capable of and what you're called to, you will not have certainty when you're on the phone with these realtors. So certainty is the key. You got to own your mojo, your swagger factor, your pep in your step, your sparkle in your eye, your confidence. And that comes from having a muscle that you build every day. Certainty is not built in a day. It's built daily. Just like momentum is not built in a day. It's built daily. Just like muscle. It's not built in a day. It's built daily. And you've got to build that certainty muscle through having a champion level routine. That's another thing that we bring to the table for our clients that we have the privilege to serve and who have the privilege to be served by us is to teach them that champion level routine that produces champion level results. It's all about maximizing your mornings because if you can win your mornings, you can win your day. If you're staying up late, you're binging out on Netflix and you're getting up late and you're reading the news and you're checking your email, that's a lackluster way to launch your day. You know that. I know that. That's not champion level. That's chump level. You want to get champion level results. You can't afford to have chump level routines. You want to upgrade your results. You got to up level your routines. It's all about your daily disciplines. As the late and great Jim Rohn once said, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practice every day. That's it. Easy to do, but also easy not to do, right? Because you could do it, but you can also make excuses. You can do that simple discipline or you can have a simple error in judgment and say, I'll do it later. You know, I'll do it tomorrow. I'm not in the mood. I don't feel like it. I got to do this busy work. I got to check email. I got to take this phone call. Next thing you know, you're sucked in the vortex of the urgent and important, the tyranny of the urgent and important, and you delay and you procrastinate on the domain of greatness called the important, but not urgent. You see, it's easy to do, but it's also easy not to do. But if you're willing to do the things you need to do when you need to do them, the late and great Zig Ziglar says, if you'll do the things you need to do when you need to do them, there will come a time when you can do the things you want to do when you want to do them. And that's the pathway to greatness, friends. The third cheese that is really going to help you attract these realtors to you like moths to a porch light on a dark summer's night is exclusivity to trigger what is a massive motivator for most human beings on planet earth. And that is FOMO, fear of missing out, fear of loss. So you want to be able to in integrity and in honor and in truth, have an exclusive invitation where it's like, Hey, this is my invitation. I'm looking for some solid partners to send my buyers and sellers to. I'm definitely uh, intrigued with what you bring to the table. I did some online research. Looks like you're doing some great things and you've got a great reputation. I'm curious to know if perhaps we have the right synergy, the right chemistry to do some business together. Are you open to conversation about that? Notice how there's no selling there. It's just a value proposition of like, hey, looks like we have some potential. Are you open? And if they say no, that's cool. You don't chase them. You just do a takeaway. If that's the case, we're probably not the right fix. The partners I work with are X, Y, and Z. But the fact you're not open to that tells me we may not be the right fit yet. And that's cool. Who do you know who's growth-minded, ambitious, who delivers five-star service, who might be open to taking on more business right now, who might have capacity to take on more business right now, who comes to mind. Notice how now I can just go ahead and refer, ask for a referral. And all of a sudden now they're like, oh shit, this person isn't chasing me. Now they're asking for a referral for someone else. And that business is about to fly right over my head. I better get out of being full-blown stupid and maybe reconsider the fact that maybe I am open. Maybe I am open to a conversation. So you give them an opportunity to snap out of their full-blown stupid mode and come back to you know, their senses around the fact that you are the real deal and you really do have a value proposition of substance. And if you didn't, you wouldn't be asking for a referral with such certainty like you did. 
right? So notice it's that certainty, it's the value prop, and it's knowing how to navigate these objections. So at mortgagemarketingcoach.com on Planet Prosper, we teach you how to overcome all these objections, the smoke screens, the buyer defense mechanisms, how to overcome and obliterate any of these objections. Most of them we just sidestep and you're going to be able to overcome objections at will, like a hot knife through butter, to book appointments all day, every day with top producing realtors. And that is the single most profitable activity you can ever master in your business. If you can learn how to crack the code on how to book appointments with top producing realtors and get them eating out of your hand because you got the big chunk of cheese and they're just like salivating over your big chunk of cheese, you can write your own ticket in this business, whether it be you want to make a quarter of a million half a million, three quarters of a million, a million plus a year, working 40 hours a week or less. You can do that. I kid you not. When you master the game, the art, the science of attracting top producing realtors to win their mind share, their heart share, and their referral share. And it all comes from mastering how to present all cheese and no whiskers. So if you're watching this, you're listening to this, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I definitely needed this today. I realize I'm presenting way too many whiskers, not enough cheese. I'm messing up my overture. I don't have enough certainty. I'm not bringing the right value prop. I'm showing up as ordinary as opposed to extraordinary. And I'm showing up as a annoying pest instead of a welcome guest. I'm showing up as a leech and a mortgage parasite and a mortgage vampire. And I need to shift based on what you've told me today on how to attract using the cheese versus repel with the whiskers. If that's you and you're hundred percent commission mortgage pro, and you want to add at least an extra hundred thousand dollars plus to your average income on an annual basis while working smarter, not harder, while working less hours, not more hours. And you want to be able to do it in any market, not just a fair weather market. And you want to be able to attract the best partners in town to make you their exclusive, such that they send you all their business all the time, put you on their speed dial. You want to have the pick of the litter. You want to be able to stand in the power position so you can attract the best partners with the right synergy, chemistry, connection, where they love and adore you, you love and adore them. It's like, you know, you're feeling that energy where they're filling your tank. They are charging your battery, not draining your battery. And you want to be able to have the shortest path to the cash method to make freedom money in your mortgage business in any market, knowing that regardless of market conditions, people are keep getting into the market, moving up in the market, getting married, getting divorced and dying and all those required transactions. They might as well have your name on them. So knowing that we've talked about a lot of distinctions here today. And you realize there's a gap in knowledge that you just scratch the surface of the surface of that knowledge. And you know that your dream is on the other side of mastery and mastering this, not just thinking about it, hoping about it, wishing about it, or praying about it, but mastering this art, this science, this formula. If that's you, you're hyper ambitious and you realize there's a gap there you need to fill. And you realize that the fastest way to accelerate your success is having an expert in your corner to show you your blind spots. Because when you're inside the bottle, it's hard to see the label. To have someone give you the recipe, the floor, the formula, the blueprint, so you can go straight to what works and not be messing around, stepping on landmines, doing it the hard way. If that's you, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we get on the phone together either myself or one of my consultants, we get on the phone together and we just have an honest conversation. It's not a sales conversation. It's just an honest conversation, a clarity conversation. It's a clarity call, not a sales call because we're not here to sell you. We're here to serve you to clarity as to where you're at, where you want to be. And if we can help you get there, we'll show you what that looks like inside of our program, inside of our proven solution. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass. But either way, Our goal for you on this call is you leave that call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Fair enough. That sounds good to you, and it definitely should. Go ahead and book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, y'all. That's all we got for today. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. I trust you got some insights, some valuable distinctions, some healthy reminders. Again, 
The biggest gap in life is the gap between that which we know and that which we do. It's not enough just to think about it, hope about it, wish about it, and pray about it. You got to do about it. And if you want the shortest path to the cash method to do that, where you can just stick your key in the ignition and drive away with all the battle-tested scripts, tools, campaigns, and the coaching that helps you propel into your greatness to fulfill your highest purpose, your highest potential, living your blessed life, your best life, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me. We'll talk to you soon. Peace, y'all. Thanks for being with me.